Hey everybody, Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. Been working all day, but I have not grabbed the camera because it's just really cold and yucky out. And I just want to get this done. Um, it's not pleasant out at all. Anyway, I've got the battery box up here and I didn't want it as high as it is. It's up to the level of the window in the house. And I really didn't want that. But I do have it off the ground nicely now and there's plenty of space um, somebody suggested skirting which I will somewhat have I put on the back wall and then rotated this back around and screwed it in place so this is firmly it's one piece and the back metal piece comes down almost to the bottom so it works pretty well as skirting if I have to I'll put some blocks around it or something later maybe some bricks so I figured I'll let you watch while I put in the other couple pieces of metal and then I'll put the top on. I'm just going to probably, because it's hunting season still and I want to get back out there, I'm probably only going to put a piece of metal on top for today, but I'm going to get the sides all done before I uh, quit at least. I've got them all cut. I used the reciprocating saw and I've got some roofing that I got for free, which is perfect for this job. And I, I save the nicest piece for outside. And then in the spring when it's warmer, I'll paint all this. Right now, obviously, I won't be able to. Now the sheet metal comes down lower so that it covers all the wood, water can never get underneath, and it runs down below the level of the bricks, or the cement blocks I should say, and also gives me a little bit of uh, skirting. So I might later put some boards or something around that bottom. We'll see how it goes, if I feel I need it. So uh, there it is. Alright, I'm going to get the side walls on, and then I'm going to try to have... Uh, Later I'll have to find something for trim for that to, uh, to do the corners, keep rain from sneaking in. 
And there, everybody, is a very impressively large battery box. It's bigger than it... I thought it would be... Was the golf cart batteries are tall. Now, later, I'm going to have to put silicone on a warmer day through these holes. Make sure no water ever gets into the insulation. But I'm also going to have an overhang. The roof is going to overhang quite a few inches on all sides so that it'll keep it off the walls. There's a big hole there. So actually I have that silver tape. I'll probably tape that off with my um, tar tape. That stuff works well. Friction heat will make it uh, warm up and seal. So now I can stuff insulation into these compartments. So I'll tar, I'll tar tape them off and then I'll stuff insulation in these compartments. And then uh, I'll be able to bring the batteries over soon. It was quite a job to shim and level this because it was obvious it wasn't uh, perfect it, with the bottom of the window frame. So that was a job, but I got it. I got it all leveled off and shimmed up nicely. And then a good coat of paint in the spring will do it a good job here, make it look good. And then I've got to put trim on these corners to close them up. Um, not so much for looks as for uh, sealing purposes, waterproofing. And we'll be, uh, we're looking good. So I'm going to go take a break, warm up a bit, and um, then i got to come back out and get a, a roof on this thing. If nothing but a piece of sheet metal for today to cover that box up. Because it is hunting season. i got to get back out there soon. I've got USB lighting in here hooked up to a uh, USB power pack. Everything is off in here. I disconnected the solar panels and right now I'm removing the batteries down here so that I can put them in the uh, battery box outside and tonight still I want to hook up the other golf cart batteries bring them in and connect them here in place of these these newer golf cart batteries the Trojans Trojan T105s are going uh, to power the off-grid tiny house and then the batteries that I just picked up not long ago are going to power my off-grid shed and wood shop because I use more I use less power in the tiny house but I use it more consistently than out here I'll use more power in the wood shop but not as often so I figured I'd put the smaller batteries here and then I've got the three sets of golf cart batteries the old ones that I'm trying to restore which I'll uh, hopefully get them going and back in service one day and that'll be a secondary backup here okay I've got all the uh, batteries disconnected and now I'm gonna pull them out outside onto the pallet out there that the other ones are on and then I'm gonna take these over to the new battery box I'm gonna bring the other ones in here and get some power going on in here get it all connected back up inside oh, sorry about the lack of light but it's emergency lighting I've got the four Duracells in sorry I'm out of breath they're 80 pounds a piece so uh, I got the four I've got half my Trojans outside on, on a wagon ready to go to their new home I've got the four Duracells in here and my goal right now is to get these hooked up and have some light in this place right away so that I can uh, work a little bit better that's what I'm doing next I'm not recording too much because it's dark and you won't see anything we have light in the workshop 12.7 volts that's the uh, energizer is it energizer Duracell batteries down there in the floor golf cart Duracell golf cart batteries 12.7 volts I got the uh, um, inverter on I've got power strip on I've got light I'm gonna wind up the uh, Quanta Q3 generator and the Benini motor over there now oh look at that much better with the light in here now I've got thinner wires here I didn't plug in the inverter for now because I need to get better wires for this I do have the wires uh, the material to make wires I am NOT going to use the ones that go to the house the house batteries I still gotta get those four out tomorrow 
and take them over and put them in the battery box. But for now, I do have power back in the electronics lab. And again, I've, see I've got big interconnects here, heavy duty interconnects between them, each pair of batteries. So I've got two 6 volt batteries connected together to make one 12 volt battery. Here I've got two 6 volt batteries connected together to make one 12 volt battery. And then I've got the two 12 volt batteries connected together, plus and minus, to make a battery bank. Which would give me then, these are rated at, I think he told me 235 amp hours. So that would be uh, 600, uh, 470 amp hour capacity I should have here if that's correct. So there we have it guys, power in the electronics lab. I'm pretty much going to call it a night at that. I don't want to use this energy up. I'm going to go pop the uh, power back on the solar panel rack. I had pulled the disconnect. And then tomorrow hopefully we'll get some charge in these things and get them equalized and get them back in service. And then uh, take the golf cart batteries out, the Trojans. So unless something comes up, that's it guys. Unless I think of something I want to record. It's Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World and the Off-Grid Project. Uh, Changing things out.